Hey everyone, Jessica Cabasi here. In today's video, I'm gonna be retouching and color grading this portrait. So this is gonna be a pretty simple video. I'm not gonna to go too in depth as to what I'm doing, you know, with the retouching. I am using frequency separation. It's my favorite way to retouch. If you wanna learn how to do this and see a little bit more elaborate tutorial, I have a couple of links down in the description, so check those out. This is gonna be just kind of briefly going over it, but more just me, you know, cleaning up this image and showing you guys how I do it. So I already have everything set up. I used my action to set up the folder with these layers right here. I'm going to go on over to low frequency and just duplicate that. I always do that because if I mess up, I got to back up. So I'm turning off high frequency so I can see the colors a little bit better. So this helps me just to see uh, more easily where I should be blending out. And I like to just clean up the skin. I don't like to do anything too crazy. We, like I'm gonna, I'll show you guys. I'm gonna leave a little bit of this shadow under her eye. I don't wanna get rid of it like a thousand percent. I'll show you how to make it look a little bit more natural. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start. So I'm just gonna be blending in these areas right here. And again, I'm using the healing brush tool for this. And I noticed that Photoshop CC changed, you know, the, the way that the healing brush tool works. And so I had to actually Google it a little bit to try to see if there was a way to change how it blends, blends in, you know, when you're trying to heal stuff. Because it was just a, a mess. I don't know what they did to it, but they ruined it. I'm like, this is not the healing tool. This is the, the breaking and ruining tool. So I went online and I Googled it. There is a way that you can change it back to how it was before. You go to like properties and then tools and then you select legacy healing, I believe. And it changed, it really was a lifesaver. I mean, it's not exactly the same as it used to be, but it's pretty similar to the older version of Photoshop. And that's really what I wanted. I was really, up <laughs> I, was, I was like, I can't retouch like this. You guys, it was a hot mess. It was like not even blending properly. I don't know. I feel like they're just adding too many changes. You know when they try to do too much and you're like, okay, now nah, you're being extra. Like, you don't need all these changes. Like, what's going on right now? Can anyone tell me why this is not? And I just noticed that it's going a little slower than usual. The PSD previews aren't working. <laughs> this is going to be like my little like therapy ranting session. Everyone's like, I just came here to watch a retouch and you're just complaining about I know right I'm sorry I'm sorry okay let's get back to the retouching here it's lagging just a little bit and I think it's because I'm recording but looks like we're doing pretty well here and by we I just, <laughs> just mean me by myself I'm alone here I just ate a pop tart so as you can see I'm not trying to do anything too crazy I'm leaving in these lines I know I got rid of this but you're gonna see when I turn on high frequency it's gonna show, it's still gonna be showing through, and I'll show you guys that. So you can still see this line right here. So I'm gonna clean up these areas down here. So you're probably wondering how I choose what to really edit and retouch. Anything that isn't really transitioning properly, like the colors are blocky on the skin and stuff like that, I like to just make smooth. So like this area right here, you can see there's little things here that can just be cleaned up. So again, it's just kind of like making everything into a smooth gradient, but you don't wanna mix all different colors. You wanna, you wanna sample colors close to parts of the skin that you're already at. So I like to just keep it within that same area. Like I wouldn't go take this color and put it up here, you know? So you just wanna make sure that you're, it's still looking um, very natural even though it's, it's totally fake, it's Photoshop. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing this. See, this is why I don't do a lot of retouching anymore on my channel because it's going away, this is laggy. It's a hot mess over here. We need like a priest to come by and say a prayer here because something's going wrong. Okay. Okay, so struggling a little bit, I don't know if I'm, I'm not sure if it's because my computer is lagging, but it's not properly worked. Okay, there we go. 
Maybe I, I feel like the healing brush tool is listening to me roast it. And it's like, you know what? Since you want to complain, we're just going to make this hard on you. Okay. It's a little patchy here. I'm just trying to fix this area and blend it in. But the, for some reason, it's not cooperating. I don't know if it's the pen that I'm using on my tablet or if it's the... There are so many factors here. So I'm just blending in this area right here. Sometimes if I'm having difficulties, what I'll do is I'll take out my blur tool and then I'll just blur that area. I wouldn't recommend doing that throughout the entire phase. I would only if it's like a real big problem area and you're having a hard time blending it in. I don't know why, you know, it, this, this is not cooperating right now. There's this, there's this section right here that is just not cooperating and I don't know why it's not working. So I'm just kind of smoothing out this area over here. And I'll just toggle the main layer back on and off to see the before and after to see how I'm doing and if it's looking pretty good. And you can adjust your brush size when going into smaller areas. That's what I usually do. If it's obviously a smaller area that you want to retouch. And then these areas right here are a little bit harder because there's more of a defined color. As you can see, it goes from the dark brown over here to a little bit more tan color. So you definitely want to make sure that is blended out. And again, sometimes I use my blur tool to just kind of smoothly transition that. And any other problem areas that I find, I'll just usually blur that out. But again, I would be using healing brush tool for most of the retouch. So it's it's kind of like an assist. Like you're struggling, if you're struggling in class, just pull out that blur tool, let it help you a little bit. Get the B plus, but work with the healing brush tool and learn how to blend as nicely as you can using it. If you're on the Titanic and you can swim, Swim to shore, but if you can't, if you need assistance, get that life jacket, AKA the blur tool. So get a, get the boat, get the entire boat. If you're retouching and it's looking really patchy, don't worry, it takes a couple of layers for everything to be blended in perfectly and you're not gonna get it on the first try. So definitely it is a learning curve and it's a process. So don't give up guys, don't feel discouraged if the first time you do this, it's not super easy and you don't get it right away because it took me quite a while to get where I am today with retouching. So yeah, just practice. And as you can see, I'm blending this area right here. And right here, do you guys see how that kind of didn't blend out properly? I could either just go back and then use an even smaller brush to blend that in. Or again, you know, you got to run to the grocery store, get some, get a sandwich or something. You don't have time. Just get the blur tool and just blur that little area out. And I'm only saying that because I'm really hungry and I want a sandwich, even though I just ate. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. So then we're using the healing brush tool just to clean up over here. I'm really being extra with this. I probably would be already done. Um, another thing is probably don't want to zoom in this close because you're going to be working on stuff that maybe doesn't even need to be worked on. Like if you zoom out, it looks great. So, don't zoom in too close. You're gonna get lost in there. It's gonna be like Ready Player One. Just, <laughs> you got the goggles on and you're, you're there for a while. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the before and after real quick. This is before and that's after. Now, high frequency. You wanna go ahead and duplicate that and then turn one of the layers on. Now, skin is going to be a little tough. And you don't want to get rid of all the texture, you still want it to look clean. So let's do that. It's always hard for me to do this and still make it look natural, so I'm going to show you guys how I would approach this. So what I usually do is find anything that kind of just sticks out right away. So maybe like this area for instance. I just already grab the texture of her skin and I just 
sample it on to other areas. And I'm just doing a single click. I'm not doing this where I go like this and I just draw on there. You don't wanna do that. So again, I'm holding and clicking a single time. Everyone's skin is different. You know, lighting can change skin texture and how you take the photo and there's so many different factors. So it's definitely good to practice on all types of different skin and different lighting situations. And I'm gonna show you guys a before and after of that. That is before and that is after. Let me show you guys how that skin texture was before. That's how it was before, I'll zoom in. And then that is after. So we just kind of softened it up a little bit. She still has a texture as you can see. So I'm saving this file and then I'm gonna do a little bit of color grading. Okay, so we're gonna get into the color grading portion of this now, which is my favorite part. And first thing that I want to do is a quick dodge and burn. And I made a new raster layer. I press D on my keyboard so I can pull up those default foreground and background colors. And what we're gonna do is switch the layer from normal to soft light. And it's basically just highlighting and emphasizing shadows. So as you can see, as I'm doing something like this, it's again, emphasizing shadows and then you can pop out any highlights that you want using the white color. So black is if you wanna go ahead and make something a little bit more contrasted on the face and then white is just popping out highlights. So it's fun, but don't overdo it because so sometimes you can get lost doing this and it, it'll look like a cartoon by the end of it. Not that I don't like, I mean, I love cartoons like the next person, but, <laughs> but don't overdo it. And I know sometimes people go crazy on the eyes so something like that would be good. And even just lowering that. When in doubt, just lower the opacity to like three. <laughs> it's like, what's the, right? What's the point of doing that? But it does make a difference. It layers on. I'm gonna do the actual eyes now. So what I would do for something like the eyes, if I wanted to pop them out a little bit more, maybe I'll use a color similar. So like, maybe like a brown. Maybe we'll do soft light. We'll see how it looks. If it's looking weird, like I won't do that. I just, I feel like I just changed her eye color. Okay, that's not even, calm down, Jessica. You're not a surgeon. Let me see, okay, that looks pretty good. So that's looking pretty good. We didn't use a white color, but I think we're doing, that's, that's looking good. I'm gonna use black and I'm gonna lower the opacity to about 11 and I'm just gonna outline the edges of her eye and I know a lot of photographers do this. I don't like it when the eyes are overly edited, it makes the photo look fake right away. So you definitely don't wanna do that. I love how I say that as I'm doing it. I'm like, dude, you don't wanna make the photo fake and then I'm like filling in this way. <laughs> okay. So that's how it's looking so far. It still looks, it looks natural, her eyes, yeah. There we go, that's looking pretty good so far. So again, I just added that layer with that highlight and that contrast and that's it as far as that goes. As far as colors go, I'm gonna use a curves layer. And I love using the curves layer because you can do so, you can transform the picture just using this layer. A lot of pressure, okay. So one thing you, you can consider when doing this, by the way, is if you wanna keep it on normal or if you wanna change it over to luminosity. And so how can I really explain this? Um, luminosity kind of brightens the picture in a different type of way. I'll show you guys the difference. So this is with luminosity and I'll make it a little bit more obvious. So that's more luminosity. And then this is normal. So I think normal just saturates the picture a little bit more, whereas luminosity really adds more texture and depth to the picture. So it's just something to consider when you are using a curves layer, what kind of mode you want the layer on is an important decision. So I'll show you right there, look at that one layer. 
added so much more depth and texture to her skin. So I really do like that. Another thing I've been really loving lately is photo filter. And the default looks really good as is. So I'm just going to keep it right there. And you can also lower the opacity if it's too much for you. Let's see, anything else that I would be using for a photo like this? I do love black and white. If you go from normal to soft light and you just lower that opacity, you can add a little bit more to the skin. And by checking off that tint, it just adds a little bit, it just adds a little bit of color in there, which I really like. So definitely some things that you can play around with when you're in Photoshop. I'm really liking the picture so far. I think one last thing I'm going to do is a solid color layer. And there are so many different options. I'll show you guys some of my favorites. So there's this dark purple color. And what I used what I used to do when I would retouch and edit pictures is I would take this over to exclusion. And I think that just brings out a lot of detail in the picture as you guys can see. It's really a wonderful layer to use. And the thing I like most about putting it to exclusion is you can play around with different colors and you can see how every different color changes the picture. So if I'm using like a blue color versus yellow versus red. So it's just kind of like what, what vibe do you want your picture to be? What kind of style? Do you want it more blue or do you want it a little bit more warm? So for this one, I kind of liked it as is, like with that nice purple tone. And with exclusion, I would recommend keeping it at a very low opacity. So you really want to look at making subtle changes. You don't want to put this all the way up to like 39. You want it very subtle. I think that just adds to the picture and makes it a lot nicer. So one last thing. Let's see, what else could I add to this? Maybe exposure we can check to see how that's going to look. Yeah, I like it how that's looking. Just a little bit of exposure. And I think that looks beautiful, very natural, very nice, simple portrait edit. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that because I like how that looks. But let me show you guys a complete before and after. That is before and that's after. So I really hope you guys like this portrait edit. Let me know what you guys think. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and Leave some comments on what you'd like to see next. Bye, guys.